from Phoebus High School. WHCS Channel 29 presents Peninsula District Basketball. The Hampton Crabbers and the Phoebus Phantoms. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tim Cole, along with Bob Hintz, and we are here at Phoebus High School for the game between the Phantoms of Phoebus and the Crabbers of Hampton. The Hampton Crabbers coming in four and five on the season in the league, six and seven overall. Phoebus Phantoms not quite as successful, two and eight in the league, three and 11 overall. What are we gonna look for tonight, Bob? Well, Tim, uh, I talked to both coaches and, and Phoebus was picked in the top three at the beginning of the season and they haven't lived up to their, their uh, rating, but they are a very uh, close, a very good team. They just don't play well together yet and I'm not sure what the problem is, but I know that last night they played uh, the Lafayette team right up to the last two minutes and then it kind of lost their composure. But the Phoebus coach is uh, Bob Kellen. He's assisted by Jerry Gentry. Uh, in Hampton, we got uh, Walter Brower, who is the head coach, assisted by David Blizzard. And here we with the uh, introductions. All right, our first introduction is Donnell Stewart, number 14, for the Crabbers. P.D. Whitfield, number 40, is introduced for the Phantoms. Kevin Swan checking in for the Crabbers, number 10. Moses Ties, number 42, will be his counterpart. Aaron Johnson, number 12, for the Hampton Crabbers. Steve Gross, number 30, for the Phoebus Phantoms. Baruch Harris, number 52, for the Crabbers. Kevin Sedgwick is introduced, number 20 for the Phantoms. David Keeter rounds out the starting five. And Ted Douglas, the same for the Phoebus Phantoms. You got the officials? I uh, sure do. We were very fortunate to have two fine officials with us tonight. Tom Stevenson, who was, we were fortunate enough to have last year at one of the ball games, and of course, Pat Patrick, is, as I think is one of the best officials on the, in the, the Peninsula District, and the officials be getting a lot of flack uh, from the coaches uh, for inconsistency, but they'll find with Pat Patrick that they, he's very consistent in his calls, and he is one of the top-rated officials, so we're very fortunate in having him here tonight, although he is a Hampton High alum. I was just <laughs> gonna say, you know, as a former, Captain Crabber myself, I remember Pat Patrick. What bothers me is I see the gray hair that he's got. <laughs> and I remember him when he was a sophomore in high school playing uh, for the Crabbers. Absolutely. He was a ball player. Yeah. And him and uh, Mike Anastasio were the uh, the two guards for the Hamptons. Yes, they were. How, how well I remember. Anastasio and Yearwood and all those fellas. They had a real fine team. I talked with uh, Coach Brower, and he says that you cannot take this Phoebus team lightly, that they are a good team, and they can just have an all-night. And I noticed that Bob Kellen, uh, has uh, shifted his lineup a little bit, and the Sedwick is starting. Now, he was a starter last year, got injured on the offseason, is just now coming back again, and this is one of the first games he started, so uh, maybe the change in personnel will give the uh, Phantoms what they need. Baruch Harris, number 52 for the Crabbers, will jump center against Petey Whitfield for the Phantoms. We're just about set to go. Four eight-minute quarters, and we are underway. Controlled by the Phantoms. They'll have Ted Douglas, that's the man handling the ball right now. Crabbers start out in a zone defense. They're in a two, uh, I'm sorry, a 122 two zone and they'll put pressure on the ball when it gets in their zone. And they look like, yes they are, they're gonna try to trap down in the corners, Tim. Phoebus, of course, trying to combat the zone with quick movement of the ball, looking for the inside man. Crabber defense, of course, collapses when necessary. Douglas pulls up, shoots an off-balance shot from the free throw line. It's tipped away and comes down in the control of the Hampton Crabbers. That was not a real good shot in that he wasn't in control of his body, so he didn't get as good a uh, turnover with the ball as, as he usually is. And uh, Phoebus is out into a 1-3-1 zone, and I bet you they also will trap if the ball goes to the corners. From the right side. That was a nice skip pass that time to get the open man. Donnell Stewart gets the first bucket of the ball game, and we're underway with two nothing for the Crabbers. Hampton High has been shooting over 50% from the field all year. They have just been exceptional outside shooters so far this season, Tim. That shot put up a little strong from Sedgwick, and the Crabbers bring it down. Nothing but net, and Swan connects 
Kevin Swan check that. Connects for the Crabbers and they lead 4-0. And they come out into a man-to-man -man defense, full court after the score. Now they drop back into their zone. Now against the zone, uh, Gross, number 30, has a green light to shoot on any time. Bob Killen said he is just an outside shooter that is just unstoppable. And the left-hander connects. Four to two, Crabbers. Baruch Harris. And no, an offensive foul charge. I'd like and to see that one on the replay. I will too. The young man that, that took the charge foul is hurt. Uh, he is down. So Harris is charged with a charge. And as you said, the young man for Phoebus on the receiving end of that charge. So that, the basket is wiped out by the charge. It sure is. And that is one of the things that uh, that most people have problems with. Of course, if if you're the team that was getting the charge, you think it's great. Otherwise, you, you don't think it was so good. But that is a judgment call. And I like you say, I wish we had an instant replay. We could look at that. But I would have to say that the young man was in position before the Hampton Crabber uh, took, uh, made his drive to the basket. So Kevin Sedgwick is the phantom on the receiving end. And he's able to get up and with a little help from his friends, he's helped over to the sideline. So I believe he'll be OK. I think he might have just had the wind knocked out of him. My being, uh, you remember I alluded earlier that he was the one who was hurt before the season, and he just now got back into the starting lineup. So uh, I don't know yeah. how big Harris is, but he's he's <laughs> no little guy, and he just ran him over. He ran right over him. You're right. Inside of six minutes to go in the first quarter, four eight-minute quarters, Hampton on top, four to two. Douglas looking inside, plays catch with Gross. Gross feeds on the baseline. One dribble up. Back to Gross. Gross is blocked nicely inside by David Keeter. Grabbers bring it down. Up the left hander again. No good. Quick rebound. And the Phantoms want to run. Three on one. Left side feed. Good. Oh, nice pass. Nice pass. PD Whitfield with the basket. And we're tied at four. And uh, Hampton, I mean, uh, Cramp, uh, Phantoms are doing a little full court pressing too. Ball knocked away and lost out of bounds. He tried to go without the ball. That uh, reminds me of a, a receiver trying to run before he catches the ball. And he tried to dribble and take off before he really had the ball in his hands. That's uh, Moses Tynes, number 42, was the uh, young man that lost that ball out of bounds for uh, Fever. Grabber's almost thrown away. At the time they the come team. right back into their 1-3-1 uh, defense and uh, cause the Hampton turnover. Bad pass on the part of Aaron Johnson. And the ball turns over, tied at four, 4.59 to go in the first quarter. This is Ted Douglas, number 10. Now Tynes, Moses Tynes handles it. Willie Thompson gets a chance to touch. And now Phoebe's kind of working a weave here. I think what they're trying to do is bring him out of that zone so they can play in a man-to-man. -man. It looks like that's what they're doing. Tynes looking inside. They'll set it back outside. Inside, Tynes from eight feet. Yes. And he gets the roll. Nice touch on that ball. So Phoebus now takes the lead, six to four. From the free throw line, good. Aaron Johnson with his first basket of the ball game, and we're tied at six. It's a little quicker game than the first one we did, Tim. Just a little bit quicker. That pace is a little fast. We're alluding to the girls game, which is being shown on Tuesday and Thursday. This game shown on Monday and Wednesday, game time, nine o'clock here on Channel 29. Inside it goes, Steve Gross up, no good. But we've got a foul. Donnell Stewart, number 14, is charged. And it'll be a two-shot foul for Gross. And we've got a substitution now. For the Phantoms, Tyrone Noble comes in. And he'll replace Moses Tynes for the Phantoms. We have an interesting situation here, Bob, that you had mentioned to me. Oh, yeah. Not that is Walter Brower. <laughs> coach Walter Brower, who is the uh, head coach of the Hampton team, 
has a son playing for the Phoebus team, so he's that got can't be mixed, something that happens very often. He's got to have mixed uh, mixed feelings when he comes out. I know he wants to, to to win, but he also wants his son to play well. I'm sure. So Gross gets both of the free throws, and Phantoms are back on top, 8-6. Harris drives the baseline, got too far underneath the basket, it hit the rim, and also a Phoebus Phantom before it went out of bounds. So the Crabbers will keep possession. Looks like uh, Hampton, uh, not Hampton, but uh, Phoebus has changed his zone to a 2-1-2 two, two, two zone now. And Trying to confuse Hampton, but they didn't confuse him too much. They got the score anyway, they it all. And it'll belong to the Phantoms. Check that, to the Crabbers. So traveling is the call. Three minutes remaining here in the first quarter. We're tied at eight. Yes, we got power. From the corner, good. So Steve Gross now, connects and he's got six points. And Kevin Swan returns the favor. Tied at 10, 227 remaining here in the first quarter. Gross drives the baseline, dishes off nicely, it won't go. And it belongs to the Crabbers. We're tied at 10, a little more than two minutes to go in the first quarter. Harris from eight feet, no, but he is fouled. The foul is called against P.D. Whitfield, number 40. At the free throw line, Baruch Harris. Are you still picking, you're still picking us up. So, uh, no good on the first of two. And coming in the ball game is Ronnie Washington for the Phantoms. He'll replace Whitfield. One shot coming for Harris. We have so, temporarily lost our monitor, but that's just our problem. It's not the uh, home viewers' problem. So uh, we'll hopefully, we have somebody look at that monitor. Inside it goes, no good. Tipped outside, put off the glass, no good. And good offensive rebounding by the Phantoms. Uh, they missed two good shots. Uh, the first shot he missed, if he had never dribbled, he would have made the ball, uh, the basket. He had to dribble it for some reason. Douglas drives the baseline. He'll put up the 12 footer. It's bouncing around. No good. Up. No good. The Phantoms can't buy a basket. Well, they have really missed some inside shots. Looking like about four or five right there that were, uh, you know, uh, what we call crippings. They should have had them. So the Phantoms have a lid on their end of the court. They simply couldn't get one of those easy layups to go. Minute and 15 seconds to go here in the first quarter. We're tied at 10. And speaking of 10, Kevin Swan, number 10, makes it 12-10 Hampton. Douglas holds it up now, passes over to Noble. Noble to Thompson, back to Douglas. He was gonna have to attack now because it's a, uh, It was a tie, it was a, Hampton is ahead with. But... 
David Peter drove the baseline. I got a call for traveling. I got to get my mouth working a little quicker. This ball game is going so fast. I've uh, kind of losing it. There. Seems a little faster paced than the girls game. <laughs> Had time to think in the girls game. I don't have time here. 12-10, the Crabbers lead. 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. They may be satisfied taking the last shot. I don't know, Tim. There's 20 some seconds to go. I'm sure they want to work around and get a good high percentage shot anyway. There's your designated shooter. That's who you want to take the shot. Uh, gross, but uh, didn't go in. Now, Hampton will probably get the last shot of the uh, quarter. In fact, I hear the cra cra coaching staff over here yelling one shot. Now that's the one they wanted, I'm sure. So Kevin Swan makes no mistake about it. Number 10 gets the bucket with just a second or two remaining. And the Crabbers, after the first quarter, lead by the score of 14 to 10. The unofficial scoring here in the first quarter, Swan had eight points of the 14 that the Crabbers registered. Donnell Stewart, number 14, had four points, and Aaron Johnson had the other two. For the Phantoms, they were led with six points by Steve Gross, and Moses Tynes and Petey Whitfield each had two. So a fast pace, but nonetheless a fairly low scoring first quarter. It really is, and uh, it's low scoring when you get six, five or six shots underneath the basket and can't make them, which happened to Phoebus. Uh, Phoebus normally plays a man to man, and they're very aggressive all over the court. But tonight, uh, uh, I talked to Coach Kellen, he says that he, his boy's just been getting into foul trouble so much. In fact, he said last night when he played up at uh, Lafayette, they only went to the foul line seven times the whole ball game. So he was really kind of upset with officiating, it sounds like. But uh, he'll only go into that uh, run and jump, man-to-man, uh, -man, full court pressure defense only at, if he's behind towards the end of the, the first half, the end of the, the game, of course. Only two free throws taken. And completed, I should add. Well, that so and very, not very many fouls at all. Well, that was another sore spot that Coach Killen told me that they shot 23% from the foul line against Warwick, and they're, they're shooting uh, much worse from the foul line off from the field. So that's been a big downer for them this year. So the Crabbers leading by four. Start the second quarter with possession. This is Keeter. Swan. Back outside for Johnson. Tipped away, last touch by the Phoebus Phantoms. Brabbers will set it up, looking for the open man. This is Swan, quick release, no good. And a battle inside, and Harris for the Crabbers will be called for personal foul number two. Neither so one of these Harris, teams. Go ahead, shoot. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Tim. Uh, neither one of these teams have a big dominant inside man. I think the tallest guy that they're out there in the court right now is probably about 6'2, 6'3. So uh, they both would like to have a dominant inside man. Seems like they emphasize quickness more than anything. Yes, they do. This is Gross, Steve Gross. Hampton's still in that 1-2-2 two, two, uh, defense, and that was a nice outside shot by number 20. That was a little short. Robert Jones rebounds for the Crabbers. Harris on the baseline, back to Swan. They swing the ball around. Keeter receives the bounce pass. From the corner, no good. Noble still dribbles the ball at the top of the key, moving the ball around. In the corner, Gross will take the jumper, and he got it. That's, that's his shot. Bob Kellen told me, Coach Kellen told me, that he has a green light when he's open, and he's uh, the leading scorer so far tonight for the, the Phantoms. Gross with eight of the 12 points for the Phantoms. Checking back in the ball game, Terrell Williams for the Crabbers, and he'll give Baruch Harris a breather. Harris comes out of the game with two personal fouls. Kevin Swan will trigger the inbound. Inside, underneath the basket, a little too far underneath for Keeter. And official Pat Patrick rules it was the last touch by the Phantoms. And he is right there, the ball almost hit him, so I'm sure he got a good close look at it. 
Johnson, Swan into Jones. Jones can't get it to go, gets his own rebound and puts it in. So Robert Jones gets on the scoreboard. Does that really hurt you when you give them second shots inside like that? 16-12, Crabbers inside, nice play, but they can't get it to go. Looked like a sure basket for a moment. B. Whitfield was all alone. And he sure should have had it, but I, one thing that he didn't do that I used to really get on my ball players about him, didn't use the backboard. Robert Jones gets his second in a row, and it's a six-point lead for the Crabbers. Moses Tynes pulls up, takes the jumper, no good. Gross on the rebound, no good. And Jones clears the boards. Quickly down court, Keener off the glass and good. They open up an eight point lead and uh, I'm sure Coach Killen is getting concerned if they turn the ball over here or they don't score and Hampton's, uh oh, he may call a timeout. Patrick, Pat Patrick, the official on that far side of the court or actually on your near side of the court, called the infraction on the sideline. Ted Douglas will check back in for the Phantoms. And he'll replace Tynes in the lineup. Peter from the corner, no good. Gross drives, he's hammered. And a blocking foul will be called. Gross will get two. Terrell Williams. <laughs> I love that he lets you know he didn't get there as a block and it'll be two shots. That was Pat Patrick. Of course, he's, stand, he's right in front of us. And of course, you seen him from the backside, but uh, he's in control. And that's what I like to see an official that takes control of the game. 5.02 remaining here in the first half. First, re first shot by Gross on the free throw is no good. He'll get a second. 20 to 12, an eight point lead for the Crabbers. Crabbers four and five in the league, six and seven overall. Gross now with nine points. He's got nine of the 13 for the Phantoms. And a mishandling of the ball gives the ball back to the Phantoms. Baseline, double team, kick it out to Douglas. Good job of saving the ball. Good job of saving the ball. Well, he did that. Up. I thought that was going to be backcourt for sure. Douglas inside, turnaround jumper, air ball. Comes down and the shot put up by Noble, and he is fouled. And, of course, that gives, that's what hurts you. You'll have to get an offensive foul, rebound, and, and they put him on the foul line. Of course, uh, this is where the FIBA Phantoms have struggled all year, is from the foul line. So, that, But tonight so far, they're doing pretty good. I don't believe they missed, but maybe one or two. One, one, one that I've got. Terrell Noble at the free throw line. He's good on, check that, Tyrone Noble. And he's got the first, second one coming. Phantoms will be in the bonus for the rest of the first half. This one comes off the heel, but it comes right to the hands of the Phantom, but he can't put it in. So Petey Whitfield couldn't handle the rebound well enough to score. Kind of a running hook shot. Missed, but the rebound put up and in by Keeter. Three, three people went for the block, and there was nobody on the other side to rebound. Gross kicks it out. Douglas will set it up. Now from the corner, off the rim, no good. And... Brooke Harris rebounds for the Crabbers. Super effort that time by the Phantoms, but they just can't get it. This is our Robert Jones. So Robert Jones, who did not start the ball game, has six points for the Crabbers. He's got a nice touch on that ball. And there we go with the 10 point lead. And I figured if it got to 10, Coach Killen would call a timeout, which he did. So the Crabbers, with good bench strength coming in from Robert Jones with six points here in the first half. They've been led by Swan with eight, four each for Stewart and Keeter. 
and Aaron Johnson with the other two. For Phoebus, it's been a one-man gang so far. Steve Gross has been the only consistent scorer. Whitfield and Tynes each with two. Noble with one. And nine points for Steve Gross. And coming into this game, Hampton had Keeter and Swan almost tied for the scoring leadership on their team. Swan comes into the game the fifth leading scorer in the league, 15.6. Keeter with 15.2. Blackman for Hampton, who as of yet has yet to play, comes in averaging over 12 and a half points a game. Gross for Phoebus, 10.7. And Tynes, who only has two points for Phoebus, comes in averaging 10 points a game. Lafayette is atop the district standings at this point. It sees now, next time we have either timeout or a quarter break, I'll give you the standings as of okay. this Saturday evening. Coming into the game. Well, I know both of these teams have uh, both played. This is the third game. They play both played Thursday night, Friday night, and again tonight, which is Saturday night. So it's got to make you start being tired a little bit with the intensity that they're playing out there. Maybe that's why we're seeing the zones. Douglas and Gross playing catch. Gross double team momentarily. Moves around, dishes it off, off the glass, no good. And we've got a foul called. Donnell Stewart, number 14 for the Crabbers, picks up his second. That was and a as I mentioned, foul. that's a bonus situation for Phoebus, so they'll get the one and one. No good on the first try. And that's what hurts you, because that's a possible two points, you end up with nothing. Rose can't make it go. The rebound comes out for the Crabbers. This is, check that, Stewart, Donnell Stewart. David Keeter is called for traveling. And he didn't quite catch the ball and he was moving and I think that's what he called it at, but that's almost like a fumble. He really didn't have it, so it's hard to call him traveling if you don't have it, but uh, in his eyes, he traveled. Is that not the rule, in fact, Bob, that if you don't have possession, you cannot be called for traveling? Right, yeah, that, that was my point, Tim. That was great. Yeah, I'm glad that you... A lot of people don't realize that. That's right. People... You have to have possession without traveling. The kid really never got possession, but it was kind of a fumble. But uh, in the in official's eyes, he thought it was traveling, so that's what the call was. 225 remains here in the first half. 24-14, 10 point lead for the Crabbers. Crabbers with the ball. Stewart from 15. Donnell Stewart with six points. And Hampton's in a 2-2-1 uh, full court press right now. They're trying to Give some pressure to the fan who's getting the ball up the court. Driving the baseline for Phoebus was Noble. Made a good move, couldn't get it to go. I noticed when I got to see uh, the Phantoms play earlier this year that uh, they miss a lot of inside shots, and I don't know if it's concentration or what, but Tim, they don't use the board as much. I, when I when I coach, and of course that was my philosophy, they put the backboard up there for more than just stopping the ball from going out of bounds. You use it to your advantage. And when you're inside like that, if you can bank it off, it, you got much better control of the ball, and it's easier than to try to get a touch shot when you're in close. First one by Ronnie Washington is good. That's his first point of the ball game. And his young man that we talked a lot about this year, uh, Rocky Croom coming in, number 22, when he was, uh, of course, we called his name with uh, a different size of ball. That's right, Rocky Croom, the quarterback for the state champion Crabbers in football. Several players on the team from that Crabber team. Will Jeter is also on the Crabbers basketball team. And I'll tell you why he's not starting tonight when we get a chance. Will
whistle inside as the shot was no good. Terrell Williams took the shot. And the foul will be called against Tyrone Noble. As you know, uh, he was one of the uh, outstanding uh, tight ends for the Hampton Crabbers team this year, plus playing off, uh, playing defensive uh, safety. And he's a very highly recruited, and he was on a recruiting uh, visit and got snowed in and missed two or three practices. And of course, uh, any coach will tell you that if you don't practice, you don't play much. So uh, it's not his fault, but uh, you know he's he's looking for uh, a college that he's going to go to. Speaking of Will Jeter, of course. Thank you. <laughs> now I forget to mention that. <laughs> 138 and moving here in the first half. 28-16. Nice move. And coming up hurt on the play, however. That could have been a costly two points. Moses Tynes comes up limping. He's favoring his right ankle. But he got the basket and it makes it a 10-point Hampton lead. That was their passive uh, full court press. Now Hampton's, I mean, Be uh, Bethel. Phoebus is in a man to man, trying to put some pressure on the, the Crabbers and maybe get some turnovers to steal the ball like they just did. And hopefully they can convert. Inside, Williams, no good. And it's tipped around and controlled by the Crabbers. Evan Swan. Baseline feed. Nice Rock. pass. Nice pass. Rocky nice Crew gets the assist. Robert Jones gets the basket. So Jones coming off the bench has eight points. Tines, turnaround, jumper, no good. And, and a whistle inside. Trying to do a 360 that time and really lost track of where the ball was and a board. So Tynes, in an effort to get the ball back after he missed the shot. So many times you see that. You, got, you see a player miss a shot or miss the ball, and to make up for it, they'll end up getting a foul because they get too aggressive. And the coach says, if you made one mistake by missing it, don't make another one by making a foul. Of course, that's easier to say than done. That kid gets out there, and he, he's trying to make up for it. And I know he's trying to impress the coach that, that of his hustle. And, uh, you know, you don't mind those kind of fouls, really, because they're kind of hustle fouls. Now, Hampton's in a stack what they call a high stack, and they're just moving the ball and trying to get a guy open for an easy basket. Of course, they're also wearing out the clock a little bit, Tim, because we're less than, right down about 10 seconds to go in the, in the uh, first half. Inside of 10 seconds. Looking for the shot, now it's knocked away. And the Phantoms get it. Oh, that, that's what it kills you. You work the clock down, and you don't even get a shot off. So I'm sure Coach Bauer is very, Brower is very unhappy about that situation, Tim. So our score at halftime, the Hampton Crabbers 30, the Phoebus Phantoms 18. We'll be back with second half action after this brief timeout. Jim, our halftime score 30 for the visiting Crabbers. 18 points for the homestanding Phantoms. Hampton was led with two players that each had eight points. Kevin Swan had eight on four baskets. Robert Jones had eight with a similar output. Six points for Donnell Stewart. Four points for David Keeter. Two each for Tyrell Williams and Aaron Johnson for the Crabbers. For Phoebus, they were led by Steve Gross, who had nine points in the first half, then four points for Tynes, two each for Washington and Whitfield, and one point for Noble. Hampton came out with a different zone this time. They're out in a 1-3-1 one, one zone, trying to give a little different look to the uh, Phoebus, but uh, yes, Noble got a nice inside shot, which gave him, uh, cut the lead to 10, so uh, Noble on the score that time. And uh, Phoebus is out in a man-to-man right quick like, so they're uh, trying to get some turnovers to get a little uh, uh, excitement back in his ball game. 30 to 20, as Stacy Gordon gets credit for that first basket of the second half. Douglas drives the baseline, has it knocked away, but it goes in nonetheless. And he called, he got a technical call on him because of what he said. 
he hit the ball, did a good job of blocking it, but went straight up and straight back in. And of course, uh, you got to watch your language. And uh, the official Tom Stevenson called the technical, so that will give uh, the Phoebus a, a shot from the foul line. Plus, they'll get the ball, Tim. So a costly technical here. If in fact Gross can get the the technical shot to go, he does. And as you said, Phoebus now gets the ball. That could be a five-point swing right there because they got the field goal, the foul, uh, the technical, plus now if they score, they'll uh, cut the, the lead from, uh, which was 12, they can cut it down to five real quick here. Douglas will put it up from 17, no good. And coming off is Donnell Stewart. Johnson and Stewart handle the ball inside low post. Harris put it up. It would have counted had it gone, but it will not go. That was a, uh, with uh, Phoebus in a man-to-man, -man, Hampton does a lot of uh, what they call uh, opposite screening. They'll screen away from the ball and open up a man inside, and that's exactly what they did that time to get a good inside shot, and of course he got fouled. Steve Gross called for the personal foul. That's his first. Harris misses the first of two. He calls that post opposite is the uh, offensive set that they run. Hampton, that is. 31-23, an eight-point bowls for the Crabbers. And now the Crabbers have picked up man-to-man. Uh, -man. They're changing every time they're coming down the court trying to confuse uh, the Phantoms. Tyrone Noble. Drives the baseline, he puts up the 10-footer off the rim, no good. Steve Gross can't get it to go. And it's knocked away inside, and we've got a foul call. Aaron Johnson for the Crabbers call for his first. Going to the free throw line now will be Petey Whitfield. Whitfield with just two points on the evening. Coming into this game, Whitfield Averaging a little less than 10, he'll get the first of two. Whitfield perfect from the free throw line. Now he's got four points, and it's a six point lead for the Crabbers. This is Swan. Can't get it to go. Whitfield Petey Whitfield the is their big rebounder for them, and I said there wasn't anybody out there any tall in 6'3", but he's listed 6'4 and a half, and he's a very strong rebounder. Stacy Gordon gets his fourth point, and they've cut that uh, lead down to four points, Tim. They're a little more aggressive out there, and I'm sure that's what Coach Killen wants to see. Good move to the bucket by Harris, but he can't get it to fall. Noble puts it up, no good, but he's fouled. Well, they got a chance to cut it to two, and they, they were down 12 to begin in this third quarter, so that's a nice run for the, the Phantoms. I don't know what Bob Killen told them in at halftime, but uh, whatever he's done, he's lit a fire under them, and they're playing with a little more intensity now. So Tyrone Noble will go to the free throw line with a chance to cut that lead from four to two. Crabbers led by 12 at halftime, 30 to 18. Noble can't get the first of two. Now that was a much better follow through that time on it. He got a nice roll, but well, he's cut it to three, Tim. So Noble has two points and the lead is three. Robert Jones looks inside for Harris. Can't get the ball to him. Spinning move. Johnson puts it up. No good. Rebound for Whitfield. Now they got a chance to cut it to one. So uh, that would really. Gordon shot. No good. Rebound. Yes. So Noble picks up his 
basket. We want a timeout being called by Walter Brower here. He's not happy at all. Oh no, you come out and you and you uh, let a 12 point lead get down to one and and you don't feel like your team, he doesn't feel like his team is running the offense. And of course, against that man to man, they should run what he called his, his post opposite where he gets screening and there should be three guys screening each other underneath the basket. So you should be breaking somebody open all the time. If they're not open, they go away to go back and screen and get some back door cuts and maybe an you know, easy inside basket. And that's what he's looking for. And he's very upset because they're not taking outside shots when he feels they should be getting that ball inside. The Phantoms have scored 12 points to just one point for the Crabbers here in the second half. So it's been a 12 to one run for the Phantoms. They've made up that 12 point deficit. They trail by a lone point now. And Coach Walter Brower over here reading the riot act to his team. And as well he should, they just kind of come out with the, and you have a 12 point lead and you figure, well, this kind of slacked out. You play two games, you're a little tired, and you're just not playing with the intensity that you should be playing with. And I'm sure that's what he's trying to tell the ball players is, ah, come on, let's, let's, let's get our head back in this ball game and uh, let's start thinking basketball instead of just kind of going through, walking through the motions out there. This past Friday night, the Crabbers defeated Bethel 77 to 68, while the Phantoms were on the losing end of a 61-48 score at Lafayette. And there was a beautiful uh, look of that inside screen. He got the guy, got screened, and he got to the basket with almost an incontest, uncontested layup. So that post offense uh, works if you run it, and that's exactly what Coach Brower was telling him. And of course, Phoebus comes back and uh, answers with a nice outside shot. Stacy Gordon with the outside shot. This is Keeter's shot, no good, no rebound. No ball, yes. Check that Gross, Steve Gross on a nice move to the bucket. So the Crabbers have seen a 12 point lead become a one point deficit. But Peter answers with a bucket and he's fouled. And see that time they did what they were supposed to do. He got inside, got a screen, got open, got the basket and possibly a three point play. Last time down he took a 15 footer and Coach Brower doesn't want him taking a 15 foot. He wants him down there underneath the basket screening so they can get the easy basket. David Keeter at the free throw line with a chance for a three point play. Tyrone Noble picks up his second personal foul and Keeter connects to give himself seven points on the evening and the Crabbers go back on top by two. We got a, a foul will be charged to Kevin Swan. Check that. Check that Terrell Williams. I thought it was in fact Kevin Swan. Stuck his knee out there. A non-shooting foul. But that is unofficially Williams' third personal foul. Hampton now is back in their 1-3-1 one, one zone, Tim. They were playing man-to-man -man and Beth and uh, the Phoebus team seemed to, to respond to it and uh, scored pretty well at will. Pass just a little too tall, and the Crabbers will get it on the turnover. 3.35 to go in the third quarter, 36-34. Hampton on top by two, the ball kicked, they'll inbounds the ball. What's happening is they're doing the screen, and the man was wide open. A guy's coming across screen, and the defensive men are not talking to each other, so they're not doing any switching. And that's why the Hampton guy is so wide open underneath the basket when they screen. Stolen by Douglas. Phantom with a chance to tie. Yes, sir. Douglas will put it up. It's no good. Tipped around, and it comes off to Baruch Harris. This is Keeter from eight. Yes. So Keeter now with nine points, and the Crabber lead is four. Tim Cole with Bob Hintz as we are bringing this game to you from the Phoebus High School gym. Game played Saturday night. Third game in as many nights for both teams. The snow caused problems, of course, last week with the schedule, so the teams had to make up the games. This would normally have been an off night. Nice baseline jumper by P.D. Whitfield. 
Well, the, F the Phantoms are keeping it close, Tim. They're still, uh, they're not giving up on them. Keeter kicks it out to Stewart, out to Swan. Off the rim, no good. Whitfield with a rebound and a whistle. Kind of a touch foul that time, you yeah, might say. It really Maybe was. Kind of looked like an uh, invisible foul to me. I, I didn't see the contact. The man got the ball, and he, he didn't lose the ball. So I. Nonetheless, the yeah, official was whistle foul. Of course, Peter. they see it a little different than you and I do. So. Well, they have a different angle, so you have to That's get true. Through. Phoebus with a chance to tie, trailing by two, no good. And the rebound comes off for the Crabbers. Out quickly, got a man down court, but he can't hold on to the pass. Williams just couldn't handle the pass. He got the pass actually a step too late. If he'd got it a step earlier, he probably could have caught it and gone up with the, the shot without even having to dribble. So Phoebus still looking to tie. Shot no good, rebound up no good. Battle four inside and the Crabbers bring it out. This is Swan racing down the floor, one on three. Puts up the left-handed hook, no good. Rebound, yes! Offensive rebound, that's what'll do it for you. Ted Douglas called for his first personal foul. The basket is good by Williams and a chance for a three-point play. <clears throat> Rocky Kroom will check in, and Kevin Swan will check out. Swan leaves with eight points. At the free throw line, as you see him, is Williams, and he converts the three-point play. So five points now for Tyrell Williams, and it's a five-point lead for the Crabbers. And more than a minute to go. Hampton is staying in that 1-3-1 one, one zone, Tim. And Phoebus seems to have a little trouble finding an open slot. That was a nice rebound by uh, Petey Whitfield. Whitfield with the bucket. He's got eight points. Inside of a minute, 55 seconds, the clock is moving. Off the heel of the rim, no good. Three-point lead for the Crabbers. Phoebus has a chance to whittle that lead down to but a one-point lead. Douglas pulls up, 14 feet out, feeds off, blocked nicely, tipped out, and here come the Crabbers. Donnell Stewart has it blocked, gets it back, and a travel. That was good, he can't catch the ball and come back, and a, that's a travel, that's a good call. But what if the defender has a hand on the ball and blocks it? Then it, and he blocked it back to the guy, he caught it, come back down, that's traveled, had they both maintained position been a jump ball. That was a good call. The, other, uh, the defensive man blocks the ball back to him, that he can't, he has to let it go, is that the yes. question? Yes, yes. You heard it right here from Coach Bob. <laughs> 21 <laughs> seconds. Send him all the letters to Tim. 41-38, <laughs> again, a chance for Phoebus to cut the lead down to one. Inside of 10 seconds, seven, six. Williams tries to feed inside, does. Gordon's got it, yes. Nice inside pass, and that's great. And the uh, Phantoms outscored them by 11 points that quarter, because they were down 12, and now they're only down one. So we got a real barn burner here, Tim. We really do. It started off like it might be a one-way, one-sided game. The Crabbers led 30 to 18 at halftime, but they were able to put 11 points on the board while Phoebus put 22 points on the board. So as you said, that 12-point lead is down to one. And a lot of those points came at the hands of Stacy Gordon, who didn't play in the first half, and came in and contributed eight points in the second half. So his eight points, along with three points by Noble. Gross had a couple. Whitfield added six points here at the second half, as did Tynes with two. So the Crabbers, who got their scoring at halftime from Swan and from Jones, really didn't get a lot of consistent scoring in the third quarter. No, they really didn't. But uh, I know that uh, Coach Killen is real happy because his team is playing with a lot of confidence out there now. Tim, as that last basket showed you, there was 
started with about seven seconds and I made two, three passes and got a nice inside shot just as the, the buzzer was getting ready to sound. So that shows the patience and you gotta have patience when you're going against the zone. You can't come down and be, uh, be too wild. You got to take your time, move the ball around, find the weakness in the zone and, and then go for the shot. The standings in the league as of last Friday night after and including Friday night's games, showed Lafayette and Denby tied for first at eight and two in the league. Ferguson alone in the second spot at seven and three. Then Bethel at five and five. Mansfield four and six. Hampton at three and five. Kickatan three and six along with Warwick. And Phoebus at one and seven. All of those league records at this point. So the Crabbers leading by a single point. Start out the fourth quarter. Seven minutes and 47 seconds left in regulation time. This is the first time I've seen Phoebus play a good tight man-to-man -man that they're playing without getting fouled. They do a lot of reaching and get a lot of fouls called, but tonight they're not reaching. They're playing good position defense, belly-up defense, and just uh, hard, what they call hard-nosed defense. It's a, a dead crowd tonight, though. You know, you'd think the Phoebus fans would be going crazy. Their team just got on top. Uh, that's true. I don't know uh, what they can do to liven them up. So Gordon, who's been the big gun here in the second half for Phoebus, gets him on top. But Jones, or rather Harris, comes back and puts Hampton back in the lead by a point. So the lead now starting to seesaw. But the Phoebus fans have a lot to be happy about right now. Their team is back in it. Gross throws up an air ball, but it comes into the hands of the Phantoms. And Hampton was in a 2-2-1 uh, defense zone, full court zone, and uh, Phoebus didn't have any trouble getting the ball up across the court. Turnaround jumper, nice shot. Donnell Stewart with a real nice one-timer. He just turned around and let that thing go in a, almost a single motion. He really did. This is Gordon. Can't come up with it. Here come the Crabbers. Really, or rather leading by three now. Harris kicks it out and moves it around. Swan from 15 feet off the heel of the rim. No good. Harris had it. Keeter gets it, puts it up. No good. And the Phantoms bring it down. This is Gross all alone. That's the man you want to be shooting that ball. He's got a nice outside touch. Gross now with 14 points on the evening. And he's brought his team within one point. 45-44. Baseline, Harris double team, looking for a man, throws it back out. Good move to the bucket, and a foul called. Aaron Johnson made a strong move to the basket. And Steve Gross gets his second personal foul. Someone over here giving the official a little hard time. They're really, he did hit the backboard. What is the ruling on that? Yeah, if, if you, you hit the backboard, that's a technical. That's exactly what He didn't just what hit it. it. He almost knocked it down. Yeah. I mean, it was obviously hit it. Surprised one of the officials didn't notice that. Well, that call is not called too much, Tim. And I think what's the intent there is if a guy is going up for a shot and you hit the backboard and you get it moving and you hit, you try to shoot and the, and the basket's moving. That's what the technical. And, and this was after a foul was called, so maybe that's why they didn't call, I don't know, but they should be consistent with it. It's kind of a no call. Yeah. From 14 off the front of the rim, no good. And the Crabbers have it. They lead by two. A little more than five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Swan can't get it to fall. Gross brings it out, this is Ted Douglas. Hampton would go down and just run their offense. They would get a nice shot, and I know that's what the coach is thinking. Fine block inside. Super block inside. Kevin Swan went up and timed that just right. Did a good job. Did good defensive uh, play by the Crabbers. These are the two quietest coaches I've ever seen in a 46-44 game. <laughs> Is this the new rule in the Peninsula District, keep the coaches on the bench? I don't know, but... 
But uh, Bob Kellen is usually a little more uh, demonstrative. Tonight he's just kind of sitting back, uh, doing a little yelling at his players, but uh, third game in a row, I guess he's tired too. <laughs> you got a good point there, Tim. Keeter turnaround or off the glass, no good, tip no good, and it belongs to Phoebus. No, I was just wondering, I, I'm not trying to be facetious, is there in <laughs> fact a rule in the uh, district that uh, the coaches are not allowed to stand up? I haven't seen either of the coaches walking the sidelines or standing up or anything. I don't know, Tim, I'll be honest with you, I really don't know, but I know one year they had it that way and they gave me a seat belt. And I still stood up. I'd have to have one, <laughs> the, the chair was still strapped to me, so, you know. Four minutes to go. We've played half of the fourth quarter, and we're not at all up at 46. Gross will try. The left-hander, yes. That's a nice shot. I can see that was a good release from here. We had a good angle on that shot. That gives the Phantoms a lead for the first time since early in the first quarter. And Another time out by the Crabbers. The Hampton Crabbers want a timeout. Other scores from last Friday night, as I mentioned, Lafayette defeated this Phoebus team 61 to 48. Hampton defeated Bethel 77 to 68. Denby beat Ferguson 83 to 78. And Warwick beat Kickatan by the score of 70 to 60. And we will have that game between Kickatan and Bethel coming your way on the 17th of February. That'll be played at the Bethel High School Gymnasium. We'll be there, and that game, of course, will be a delayed tape. We'll be telling you more about when it's being shown. But we'd like to see all of you fans come out there for that game. Absolutely. This is real fine uh, high school basketball is being played on the peninsula, and that is a real good rivalry between the uh, Kickatan and Bethel. It's been a rivalry ever since uh, Bethel opened up in basketball. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be the uh, second uh, coach Oh, to check that third coach over at Hampton and uh, I mean at uh, Bethel High School and uh, we always had a tremendous rivalry with Kickatan. It's the kids uh, have, it's a clean rivalry but it's, it's a, a good rivalry and it would make uh, good basketball. So uh, we do want the fans to come on out and uh, check us out in person, up close and personal. Up close and personal, <laughs> <my> golly. <laughs> well this game far from decided, the Crabbers now trail by two a position they have not been in most of this game. But the Phantoms have been tenacious to say the least. They have not allowed Hampton to get too far away. They did trail by a 12 at halftime, but as you saw in the third quarter, they closed that, that margin considerably. Hampton looking to tie. Three and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Ball knocked away. Hampton does not have either of their big men in there right now. Neither Jones nor Harris are in the ball game for the Grabbers. So they're going with a little faster lineup, I guess you might say. And, but they're still doing a lot of screening. I'm watching them underneath the basket. They're doing some heavy screening underneath that basket. Kevin Swan connects. He's got 10, and he's been almost completely silent here in the second half. He had eight at halftime. That's only his first basket of the second half. And Hampton uh, came back now, this time after that timeout, they're back in a man-to-man. Uh, hopefully he wants to get his team playing with a little more intensity out there also. We've got a tie game with uh, just under three minutes to play. This is Douglas, gross in the corner, looking inside, wants to get the ball inside if he can. Peter intercepts for the Crabbers. Yeah, that was, that was not a good pass. It was kind of telegraphed the whole time. And the Crabbers turn it over, so neither team getting a shot off. And when you tie it up, you want to at least get a shot. Douglas from 15, yes. So Douglas has four points, and he puts his team ahead by two. Baseline jumper, no good. Tipped around. And goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Crabbers. Rocky Kroom checks in for Hampton, replacing Dalel Stewart. And Sedgwick will come out 
And he'll be replaced by P.D. Whitfield. So Phoebus now with the ball and a two-point lead. And he will either go to a full a four corner, what she does a lot of time, he'll run a four corner or a four corner to score. And he didn't play, I thought he might go to a four corner, but he didn't. Hampton looking to tie and they'll call a timeout. So the Crabbers now with a minute and 24 seconds remaining. And that's the third timeout that I can remember the Hampton Crabbers uh, calling. I can't remember if he was calling timeout, so they've got all their timeouts left, I believe. Okay, Hampton has one timeout remaining as Pat Patrick, the one of the officials came over here to check that particular situation. And they, and they got three over there. Phoebus has three timeouts. So that becomes quite crucial because you're down in a situation where Hampton now trailing by two points, has the ball. They are obviously looking to tie the score, but they don't have any more timeouts after, well, they have one more. One more. Whereas Phoebus has three. And, and you have to uh, consider uh, certain scenarios that could happen where uh, maybe uh, Hampton fouls one of the Phoebus ball players and you want to ice him. So you don't have that timeout to burn to ice the, the guy. So, you know, kind of puts you in a, in a situation where you got to almost save it if, in, if you need it for strategy rather than to, uh, to put pressure on a foul shooter. <laughs> well, a minute 24 remains, 50 to 48. It's been a good one. Grabbers built the lead, and then only saw in the third quarter saw the Phantoms whittle away at that lead and finally only trail by one point at the start of the fourth quarter. And now Phoebus ahead by two. Hampton trying to tie. From the free throw line, yes. Aaron Johnson now with five points and we're tied at 50. Now gets down to nail biting time. A minute 10 to go in the ball game. Hampton pressuring the ball. Soft jumper. Right Brooks. back at him. Now, that's, that's aggressive offense. Uh, Gross is just having an exceptional game tonight. Gross puts his team ahead by two. We're under a minute. Off the rim. No good. Rebound. Phoebus. That is the man I would tell you not to foul would be Gross. He's the one that's been out there on the field. Now, Bob Kellen is calling the timeout, and I'll tell you what I what's going to happen. If he scores and makes either one of these foul shots, he's got a one and one, so if he makes at least one of them, the most Hampton can do, come down and score, gives them four. He's going to tell his ball players, hey, we're going to spread this thing out and make them foul us. Aaron Johnson, number 12 for the Crabbers, called for his third personal foul that last time down. So Phoebus now in a pretty good position. They've got a two-point lead. And they've got their best shooter on the floor. I mean, on the foul line, he's the one that they put in and shot the technical foul, if you remember. Uh, so he was the one, if I was coaching, he was the young man I'd want at the foul line. Uh, of course, this, this game was far from over. We got 43 seconds. and. Uh, uh, a lot of strange things can happen, Tim. We can get all kinds of uh, uh, different uh, situations here. But the thing goes down that the Phoebus now has two timeouts left. The Crabbers have one. So uh, we'll see what happens. There you see the Phoebus cheerleaders on your screen. Good crowd tonight. I'm glad we were able to get a lot of the crowd shots for you. The lighting here at the gym, not the greatest in the world, but it appears our cameras are picking up the the uh, we just well. have excellent camera crew there. They yeah. do. The, the <laughs> staff really, the crew always does a great job. They've been out here since early this afternoon. And at the free throw line now is Steve Gross. He's got 18 points to lead all scorers here in the ball game. I'll tell you who's been the big gun though is this Stacy Gordon. This young man has come out and had 12 points here in the second half. Well, he, did he play much the first half? Didn't play at all the first half, so uh, Bob Killen must have saved him as his secret weapon or well, something. Well, maybe it's because of uh, Moses Tynes has not played the second half. And if you remember, he did twist an ankle there during the uh, first half of play, and it may just be giving him so much trouble that that's why he's not hadn't been uh, hasn't been in at all the second half. Gross gets the first. Killen over here to my left, giving instructions to his team, telling them what he wants them to do. And 
Gross misses the and Of second. course, now you're, you're uh, Phoebus, you don't want to just, uh, just foul him and let him score with the clock off. That could just about seal it. That could just about seal it, and then he just made a walking foul. 25 seconds, five-point lead, and uh, crowd just went crazy because they really thought that uh, Swan, I believe, was the one who went for the shot was fouled. There was no whistle. So only 25 seconds now. Another turn of events, a five-point Phoebus lead. And as you said, the Crabbers have turned the ball over. Yeah, Phoebus has got the ball coming in bounds with a five-point lead in 25 seconds. So there's a whole lot of pressure on the Crabbers. Plus, Tim, that was their final timeout. The Phantoms, of course, coming into the game having only won two games in the district. Looking to make it three and eight, and the Crabbers are four and five in the district. Well, I tell you what, I'm sure Bob Killen would say if he could do this all year long, play three games in a row and win two out of the three, that's a whole lot better than you've been doing all season long. Uh, I, think I, you, I think you alluded to the fact, too, that uh, in that Lafayette game that he lost, they were they were only trailing by a couple of points. Two minutes ago in the game, they were down by two, end up losing by eight, and he just felt like the game got out of, out of uh, hand, and... Uh, I think he was uh, really wasn't pleased with officiating in that ball game. He said some of the the parents came off of the, out of the stands onto the court after the game that were real really upset. So uh, uh, of course they're just as biased as anybody else when you root for your home team. So parents can be really biased. <laughs> let's, let's face it. Ball knocked out of bounds on the end pass. Still belongs to the Phoebus Phantoms. Crabbers desperately need the ball back. Foul charge to Swan, that's his second. 17 seconds, so eight points. Check that, eight seconds elapsed. Yeah, that seemed like to me there's a whole lot more time going on, but this uh, is... It's Sometimes exciting. it's harder to intentionally foul someone than you think it is. Yeah, really, you've got to be going for the ball. If you don't, then it's a two-shot foul. Got to make an honest effort to go for the ball. And, of course, now that means they got three possessions they've got to have, and it's going to be almost hard to get three possessions with no timeouts. And, of course, the score here means he's got four possessions that the Crabbers have to have. And he got it. Seven-point lead. Swan gets his own rebound, yes. Can't call a timeout. And that, will, of course, that will be a technical, technical foul. So they don't get the timeout. No, they don't get it. You can't get the timeout. It's it's a technical foul. We'll have a shooter. And of course, then they get the ball out of bounds. Well, and I believe they would have gotten the ball out of bounds. Yeah, they, they would have so. got it anyway. But I, and I think it's only a one shot technical foul. Which you know that maybe not be a bad idea. You, at least you got the clock stopped. Yeah, it's not that bad a play when you consider the fact that they had to stop the clock. Yeah. Well, they trail by five, only seven seconds. Now, Phoebus has called the timeout with seven seconds to go. They got the six-point lead, and they've got the ball. <laughs> it doesn't look real good for that, especially <laughs> when you don't does. even have a three-point uh, three shot in high school ball. Uh, that's true. That means you need it twice, wouldn't you, Tim? And uh, it's... Uh, I, you know, I have to take my hand, uh, hand off to the uh, Phoebus Phantoms tonight. They were down 12 coming out, and now they're up by six, so that means they've outscored them 18 points in the second half. He's Turned done a nice turnaround. Effort. And like you said, the young man that came off the bench did not play at all, 
the, uh, the, the first half and ended up with, who was that again? Stacy Gordon ended up with 12 points, or at least at this point he's got 12. And you know, that young man, if he plays that well, you wouldn't want to think that, hey, maybe we should have had him into the whole game. But I know Killen is really happy because they've uh, played with a lot more intensity the second half than they did the first half. Well, there are nine teams in the district, Bob. How many teams will go to the playoffs? Eight, eight in the district tournament. The bottom team does not get to go. So this be, uh, you know, give people a chance to go maybe. Well, they're, they're, if they win this game, they'll be uh, three and eight. They're still in it. Still some games to go, of course, in the season. Yeah, they, I think they've, uh, I know Hampton's got about five games to go. I don't know if there's five for everybody. Had six players, I mean, that's good defense. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to possibly win the game. <laughs> you gotta pull out all the stops, but I don't think that one will go down. The Chris is not gonna let that happen. And two seconds go off the clock, and we've got another foul. This one is charged to Tyrell Williams. That's his fourth. That's academic at this point. Yeah, at the really free throw is, line. Uh, Noble at the free throw line. He's got six points unofficially. And Noble will be shooting one and one. Noble gets the roll. Everything is going good for them. They have shot poorly from the line all year long. And tonight they're, they're making uh, the best percentage they have all year. Obviously, it doesn't really matter at this point. The final score, the Phoebus Phantoms trailing by 12 points at halftime, come back to win by eight. So uh, as you said, an eff excellent effort on the part of the Phoebus Phantoms. I tell you, as a happy crowd uh, it's coming out of the stands, they didn't sound too happy during the game. I don't know why they weren't more excited, especially when they made the comeback, but uh, the, the Phantoms did a good job coming back and uh, controlling the tempo of the game the second half and uh, overcoming that 12-point deficit. Uh, I know Bob Killen is very, very happy with them. Uh, Walter Brower, I'm sure, is upset. His team played two good games uh, Thursday and Friday in one and then uh, had it seemingly the first half, had this game in under control and uh, just kind of lost it. So. Uh, that, uh, that happens. Uh, you got to wrap up for us, uh, Tim? Yes, I do. I'll be get a chance to hopefully show you the names of the fine folks that put this all together for you. We want to, of course, thank the officials here at Phoebus High School for all of their cooperation in Absolutely. helping thank us do this particular ball game. Unofficial scoring here in the ball game. First of all, for the Crabbers, they were led by Kevin Swan with 12 points. He was followed by Keeter with nine. Jones, Robert Jones with eight, along with Donnell Stewart with eight. Five points each for Aaron Johnson, Baruch Harris, and Tyrell Williams. Ronnie Blackman, one of the leading scorers on the team, did not play tonight. I'm not sure exactly why he didn't Well, play. again, it may be he got hurt in the games that way the Thursday or Friday night game, which is very possible. Uh, I'm not privy to that because I didn't talk to the coach about anybody that was injured prior to the ball game, Tim. But uh, I, I like to take this time, if we could, just to, to thank our crew. They did an excellent job setting this thing up. Uh, we were supposed to do it last Tuesday and of course it got snowed out and this is a makeup from that Tuesday game so uh, they came up and set up everything and they had everything set up ready to go when I walked in here at uh, about 5.30 tonight and uh, <coughs> Sam, young Sam still and, and uh, of course our, our director oh, Scotty Bowers, we, we appreciate that uh, all that they've done for us. Just to round out the scoring now for Phoebus, they were led by Steve Gross unofficially with 20 points. He was followed by Stacy Gordon, the man who came off the bench in the second half and scored 12 points for the Phantoms. Then eight points each for Tyrone Noble and Petey Whitfield. Six points for Ted Douglas, four points for Moses Tynes, and two points for Ronnie Washington. So a fine team effort on the part of the Phantoms as they trail at halftime by 12 to then come on strong and win going away 60 to 52. Okay, I, I, All right, so again, that's our final score. 
Phoebus 60, Hampton 52 for Bob Hintz, Tim Cole, the entire crew. Thanks for watching, and good evening, everybody.